your guys' time. Thank you guys so much for joining us this evening. Um, I'm Alan Hallett. I'm the superintendent. Let's start. Uh, welcome those that are online as well. I'm hoping there's more numbers there than they're in here. Uh, but we knew that as soon as you open it up online, people think they can be in their PJs and their cup of coffee. And it's a little more, more gentle than this. But you guys get to actually ask questions. So th- you know, that's the benefit. No, they'll, they'll get to ask questions online as well. And I'll show you guys that in a second. Let me introduce uh, Michael Papik, who is our board president, to open us in prayer. All right, let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for this time that we could be together. Uh, just thank you for Coal Valley and the gift of this community. Thank you for Alan and the administration, the leadership, and, and all of the teachers that serve our families um, so well. Um, we pray that you would just go before our time together tonight um, as we talk about um, the plans that you have for us and where you're leading and directing. Um, we love you. Amen. And then just uh, to introduce a couple of board members in the group too, we have Todd Gill just walked in. He's in the back there. And one of our newest board members, Jason Werner, right here. So thanks for, thanks for being here, guys. Okay, great. Thank you, guys. Um, this hopefully is not, it's not a long presentation. Most of the information that I have to share this evening probably is about 30 minutes. We will have time at the end for for questions and all that kind of stuff. As long as all the technology works, we'll be in good shape. And I knew as soon as I clicked that, it wouldn't. You know we tested this, right? Like three times. Okay, let me turn it off and on, we'll see. Oh, maybe it went to sleep. Do, 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 do. If you guys, could you guys hit next slide for me? Obviously. Since obvious, and uh, next slide, of course. There we go. Questions. If you guys would take your your uh, uh, phone, you can zip that, and you can go there during the time to ask any questions. They'll be online. I'll be able to have those up here as well as Tabitha's got them, and we'll be able to answer those. We'll also capture those questions, and we're going to email the answers to those questions back out, so that as everyone has questions, they can see the answers to the questions as we go. Uh, we'll summate those and send those out probably next week for you guys. So I'll have this back at the end um, for those that want to, as well as those in here will actually, we should have a time on the microphone for you guys to be able to ask questions. And we'll see. I'll just, can I just point it at you, Brian? I don't know what else to do. And it, why don't you play the video? It's one more time. Thank you. 
Okay, I'm back here because I'm trying to get my remote one, one more time. Um, I love at least the, the video. You get, get to see a lot of the pictures. It's fun. I've been here about 18 months now. And so most of the pictures that are up there, I'll let Brian bring that to me. Most of the pictures that are up there, um, I actually got to see most of those. So that I know excites me as I'm sitting there going, oh, I remember that. I remember that. And it's pretty exciting. One of the first things that we do, we actually do this every board meeting. We go through and we read our purpose and we read our mission because they are critical to who we are and what we do. We, and we don't want to forget about them. Well, I think a lot of organizations and a lot of schools forget about what their purpose and their miss, mission is. So I'm going to read these. I won't be, be long, beleaguer them, but I want to make sure that we hear them. Purpose, the only reason we exist is to serve Jesus Christ by developing the whole person through a Christ-centered education. Hey, it worked. I'm so excited. And our mission, partnering with Christian families to shepherd and challenge students toward their individual potential to impact the world for Christ. It's a focus of what we do. I pulled out, there's a few paragraphs. If you're on our website, uh, you can read kind of some details and we go through that as well as the core values that I'll talk about here in a second. One of the statements that it says is this, our mission that is that every student, regardless of their individual giftings, be shepherded and challenged to their individual potential. We want to make sure that each and every one of these young people, young men, as I'm thinking about my 18-year-old boy, a uh, young man now um, that's a senior, that they get individually touched and impact, that they um, have a significant person in our building. And to kind of put them in just common words, we want every single young woman, young man that's in our building to have significant adult that is loved and cared for them. That when they have experiences with their teachers, that our teachers know them. They know them deeply. We can speak into their lives. We can see the strengths. And is it hard? It is. It's hard to know every single kid. But I can tell you one of our goals, one of my goals, as I whittle this down to like sim simple common language, is to not let one kid fall through the cracks. And, and when it does, when we feel like they're getting to those, that's, that's when we, we're battling to try to not lose any kid for any reason. And so you just need to know that's a passion of ours. It's a passion of mine personally. It, it is to the core of who we are missionally, making sure that Christ is the center of what we do. And I know most of you, as you've given us feedback, that's why you have your kids here. Uh, I just want to make sure you guys hear from me. That is our core purpose and why we're here and what we're, why we're trying to do what we do. Our core values are grace, truth, and love. Um, I was talking to one of our board members the other day, and he said, how many schools do you know that that's their three core values? Grace, truth, and love. And in each of those, I'd encourage you, because I don't want to bore you to death, I'd encourage you if you've not gone, on the website you can click on these. We, have, we actually have scriptures that go through each of those on why we believe what they are. And uh, just like my own induction, I'm on month 18, and one of the elders, uh, who, he was an elder at the church, but he's, he's a board member of ours now. He actually in, does induction for every one of our board members as well as the new superintendent. And we've only gone through all the scriptures for grace. We're just getting ready to get to truth after 18 months, just so you guys know how serious we take making sure that especially the leaders within our organization, as well as our teachers, know who we are and why we do what we do. All right. I don't know if we've ever even shown financial pictures, but I want to give you guys a big financial picture of where we're at. Uh, this is our general budget. Um, tuition, you guys can see tuition fees, other, and our total income. Uh, this this year is about $9 million, a little bit over $9 million. Um, when you look at the expense categories, certainly you can see that wages and benefits is somewhere around 70, I think 72%, something like that, Brett. Is that pretty ballpark close? I know it's a little around, right around 70%. Facilities, supplies, depreciation, there. And right now, which I, I'm proud to say that we, we're doing a, a great job financially, is we're able to show that there's at least a positive cash flow of about $177,000 right now a year. There's not a lot of Christian schools, private schools that can say that, that they're flush, that they're not having to dip into reserves or do those kind of things. Uh, we have some debt, we don't have a lot of debt, but we are able to function in a great way just through the tuition you guys pay to be able to do this. And uh, uh, we're excited about that. Second page is really our cash position. 
First, on the left side, you guys can see where our debt is. We have $1.5 million on the new property. That's the 72 acres that we purchased. Now, I re you probably saw a video of me. I said we got enough cash to pay for that. We did. We made a decision to borrow some of that and keep that money in reserve and do a low interest loan on that, which is what we're dealing with right now because the board felt that was a much smarter financial decision. So we do have a $1.5 million um, debt on that. And we have a $3.8 million bond on this campus, the Meridian campus. And it really was the gym and that section over there when they rebuilt that. How many years ago was that? Michael, you remember? Long time ago. Matt, do you remember? Yeah, when was the addition? 06 was, was when that was, when they did that, that addition. I'm glad because it would be, be a little more expensive now than when they did that for sure. And so that's where the debt sits. You guys can see our cash position. We're, we're, we're really blessed right now. Operationally, year over year, we have $1.8 million in the bank. And fundraising, uh, thanks to some amazing gifts that we've had, especially in the last two years, uh, is 2.7. So we have a total cash of $4.5 million right now. 1.7 of that is designated for the new property. So you can see that, that what we owe and what we have in the bank to be able to pay for that would, would clear us any time that we wanted to do that, okay? And so we're, we're really blessed, and thank you guys so much for being our partners on that. Financial position. Uh, continued tuition that we're looking at. Uh, we did have a full discussion this week on, on at the board about tuition. Uh, we're looking for that tuition to probably raise around $350,000. Uh, those, everyone always goes, what percentage of that, what the exact number, it's gonna be around 5% is probably what we're looking at. And just so that you know, that amount will be going almost exclusively to teacher raises and benefits. Um, this last year benefits for us increased 16%. Am I right on, Brett? 16? We're praying that benefits don't do that again to us, but we're planning for 10%, and we are trying to bring our base pay, especially for teachers up, to be competitive with the local district. We keep trying to keep it around 85% of where the local school districts are, especially the base pay, and so we're battling. They got a federal, basically it was a federal grant, I think it was three years ago, that bumped the starting pay of teachers up to 40,000, which we did not get that federal grant, and it, it changed some things locally that we're trying to catch up to right now. So you guys need to know that that's where that money will be going. And you guys will see the new tuition rates fairly soon. Um, I already read that. Focus on teacher salary. And uh, we were just notified. How many of you guys have a custodial service that works in your building or something? <laughs> How many of you are struggling with a custodial service that's working in your building? Um, they told us there is going to be a 30% increase in our custodial service. Uh, we were told that about a month ago. And then two weeks ago, they said, don't worry about that 30% increase. We can't keep working because we can't keep hiring people. So just so you, get, you guys can be praying for us. We are seeking a new custodial service right now. Um, and uh, we're praying that that 30% is not actualized, that we actually can come in close to where we're at right now. But you guys all know every service, just like what you guys are dealing with, is costing more. All right. Next slide, celebrations. I want to celebrate a little bit of, uh, I think, how we've, even as I'm standing here knowing that we're taking the week off at the elementary, I thought that was at least humorous, um, but the impact that I think we've been able to, that God's blessed us as we've been able to walk through this COVID issue. And uh, as you, you can, can almost look on any news feed and see the repercussions that are happening to students right now. The biggest repercussion we're supposedly seeing with uh, especially see, seeing with teenagers, with adolescents, for those that haven't read, is mental illness, is a lot of the depression and the things because they're not doing the interaction typically that they would with their students. They're not getting to do those normal things. Even the mask issues are causing challenges. It's funny, my wife, I won't say, where she, she's working right now and working with, in, in, a, in a group, with a group of students that wears masks. And she's been doing that just for a couple of weeks. One of the first things that she said is not being able to see the visual expressions when she's dealing with a first grader that has some learning issues and trying to do that, the challenges that sit there. There's so, it's so important for us to, to live that way. And God's blessed us. We've been able to walk through this. We have not been closed much of the time. The only times that we've closed like elementary right now is because we just can't staff it. We just don't have enough staff. And we definitely want to be smart to make sure that we don't have that continue to spiral. And so I think we've been really blessed. Uh, with that said, the next thing uh, that we've seen is there's been academic things. There's been gaps for those that have not been in education. How many of you guys have ever taken an online course? How many like online courses? All the tech people are raising their hand. Brian's over there raising his hand or something. 
I, I struggled with that, and many students do, because of the lack of interaction that happens. And so we know that the academic gap that happened for those that did way too much online education is there. I can tell you, because of a lot of our services, the SAS services, a lot of the integrated approach that we're doing, many of those kids have caught up very quickly, because it's not an intellectual challenge. It just is a gap in information. And so we're really happy to see the progress that we've seen in our students, especially in the elementary. That's, that's one that's a lot more significant as far as the growth. If you can imagine being a second grader, you're still learning to read in the middle of this. And so that's where we've seen the, the significant increases in gaps that were there. All right. So I'm going to give some more celebrations. Some of you guys have elementary kids. Some of you don't. So I'm going to throw a few of those celebrations out there. This is my first, my favorite one that was on my slides. Early childhood now learns to love school. So if, you've, if you haven't been around preschool, early childhood, one of my favorite things is instead of them crying when the, their parents are dropping them off, they're all excited and they want to hit the playground. So it's fun to see them at school growing and, and going into them. Um, I talked a little bit about this already. Students are quickly closing the academic gap we talked about, and they're calling it the COVID gap or the academic COVID gap that's sitting there. And uh, especially those that moved from out of state or other areas that came to our school. And many of them, of course, came here for that reason. They want their kids to be in school. Some of you are sitting in this room right now or listening to me online. And uh, we are cer certainly glad to have you part of our family. Um, the other piece, we have full accelerated math classes. You know, many of, we have a lot of those in fifth and sixth, and I'll talk a little bit more about the different opportunities. Some of you guys have this, but also in middle school and high school of, of our science and math, as well as some of our advanced English courses. Um, I'm not, I don't have the numbers here, but I, we were just, as my son, he's getting ready to go to college. He's a senior this year. But right now we're adding up at least the dual credit classes he currently has. It's very possible, even though he hasn't worked that hard. I'll just say that right now. Even he's probably, I doubt he's watching me online, so I think I'm safe. But I think we're going to probably at least miss an entire semester of, of college. So if you want to add up the tuition there, I think the courses only cost, well, what do they cost? 250 a course or something like that? What's ballpark like for a credit? 250 for a three quarter credit course versus. I think 2,500 or something crazy at a, at a, for a college course. So the savings that you get for, for getting them those basic courses here as opposed to college is, is, is phenomenal. And so um, I, I definitely give Kim kudos for the number of dual credit courses that, and AP courses that we have at the high school, especially for a school our size. Guys, it's, I've been to a lot of high schools, and, and uh, per quota, we're doing an amazing job with that. Um, oh, I, did, I totally skipped at least one of this, this piece. Also, the student leadership areas. Um, we have Tri-M Music Honor Society that hosted a successful talent show this year. NHS and Student Council uh, have also been developing their leadership abilities and planning and hosting a lot of different school events. As, at the time we had COVID that shut things down, it's been nice to be able to see both of those organizations both get, go out into the public and serve as well as create those opportunities for the students here at school. All right, faith taking root, elementary chapel, worship, and salvations. How many of you guys have had kids in elementary or ever have gone to an elementary chapel? Okay, there, there's just really nothing quite like an elementary chapel. I know we're in the secondary right now. There really just isn't, but to be able to see how God continues to move there and touch those kids' lives, you go in that main sanctuary, and I know during COVID, we were full in that sanctuary worshiping God, and we, we did a great job of going that, but just seeing how God's touching and impacting those kids. The other part is if, if you have an eighth grader high school student, um, they had some pictures of the retreats that were there. Uh, and Matt and Brian Goodbar both got to lead a lot of that. And we did, they did a phenomenal job, guys, of creating an atmosphere where these kids can experience Jesus in a, a relational way. They saw the modeling of the adults that were there. And we had handfuls of kids that both recommitted them, themselves to the, to the faith, to Jesus, as well as accepting the Lord for the first time. Um, or that time where they're like, man, I'm not sure I've ever done this before. Not real for my own self. Uh, most salvations, uh, Brian can probably preach this for me, but Mr. Goodbar can, uh, most salvations for, for kids happen from the age of about 13 to 16 years old. There's an incredible window of the time that they're starting to own their own faith for themselves. And so I think th those were just amazing opportunities we had this year. A lot of great things going on in our Bible classes. I'm sure you guys hear about that as well as advisory. We have a, just a great team there. We just presented an opportunity, if you haven't heard about this, for YWAM, which is Youth with a Mission. Um, and Mel Melody Mullman is running that, as well as, who else is running the other, other one? What's that? 
Oh, Brent, yeah, Brent is running run of those also. But we have two small teams. Brent, do we know how big the teams are going to be? Okay, like ballpark, 10 or... Okay, two, two teams of 10, 10 or something like that. They're going to be able to go out and do these short-term missions projects that are going to be this summer. A lot of our international stuff, because we used to go to the Philippines and all, some other things, of course, because of COVID, have been shut down. So we're looking for other opportunities we can get these kids. Um, and I will say this too, this unscripted. If your kids or you have not been on a mission trip, do it. It's a life-changing experience. I really think every, every, every single Christian ought to at least do a short-term mission. It helps you understand what they go through as well as it takes a whole different level of your own faith as you're walking through that. So I just encourage those opportunities. And then student relationships, one of the most important things we see, as well as one of the most challenging things we deal with. Um, you know, Mr. Beglinger, I think he spends 97% of his time working on student relationships. And... Um, you have days that you're incredibly excited about what you're seeing and days you're like, these kids act like kids. It's true. You guys remember being teenagers and uh, in Mr. Goodbar dealing with eighth graders and seventh grade girls and eighth grade boys. It depends on which, which level it is, on which grade it's going to be that, that way. And, uh, but what, what's an amazing thing that I continue to see here is how our teacher staff, our leadership st staff guides and directs these young people in a biblical way through relationship challenges. Um, and we just pray social media go away. Those are the two things. That's, it's, it's the devil. I know, I know Kim just clapped about that thing. She just wants to blow up cell phones and some things like that. You, you, can't, not, you can't argue with it. There's, there's some amens to that for sure. Next level. Um, these are just a few other celebrations we have. We, we had a 20,000 uh, STEAM grant uh, for Glowforge. Uh, and our STEAM program, which is science, tech, engineering, art, and math, they continue year after year to get grants. And they just do an amazing job. We've got that program going from the elementary all the way up, but super excited about what we see. Um, we have a Na NASA interns are, are visiting classes to show virtual reality projects that they're working on. Future cities building their prototype for this year's challenge. Uh, the, the, that's the word. The competition robotics team is back in action with a ridiculous challenge. Uh, the team is conquering right now. And WISE is a hosting lunches with industrial experts monthly for those interested in pursuing these fields of study. I love the fact that we're encouraging young women to be a part of um, science and engineering. And then finally, Coach Marino, a football coach, is hosting an elementary football clinic again this year. So we're really excited about seeing that. And I'll talk a little bit more about sports here in a second. New programs. Uh, middle school and high school computer tech teacher and coach, um, Brian, who is just now helping me get our tech. We were super excited to steal him away from California. And he has as many or more California jokes, I think, than any of us do. Seems like it's always the Californians that actually have some of those. And uh, But we are incredibly excited about having him part of our program. He came with an, an amazing amount of background in educational technology. And so we brought him in both to coach students as well as coach staff on how to integrate technology specifically to our, to our teenagers, middle school and high school. Uh, elementary art teacher, we added a whole bunch of art classes and we're gonna continue to see that happening at the elementary part. I wrote a couple other notes down here. We have classes for film and discovering tech for eighth graders to expose them to computer programs, cybersecurity, web site building, in addition to standard Microsoft tools. And I needed help with my presentation right before this. That was good. Um, and we're super excited about what they're continuing to add with that. This year, the, it was a, the seventh, we had a special trainer that came in, uh, Linda Jordan, who's a friend of mine, international trainer, that taught our, our staff on uh, relationship, rigor, and relevance. Um, she's internationally known, a number of, of books that she's authored, but we specifically are concentrating on, on the first part of this, which is relationship. Uh, knowing that if you really want to touch and impact kids, the number one thing you want to do is relationship. And then we want to integrate the rest of that in with rigor and, re and relevance. Uh, I tell you that only because we'll be, you, hopefully we'll continue to see that as a part. You know, we want to take even some of the book learning that we're doing and integrate it in such a way that more hands-on, more integrated approaches, making sure that we're showing the relevance behind the learning because we know that's how we can connect to these guys' brains. Um, I'm trying to remember the term that's used. Most of us, as we grew up, we would study things to learn it. Students now actually do things to learn it. It's opposite of most of how we, we learned. 
And so as we're approaching education, we need to make sure that there's a lot more doing for them to learn as opposed to learning to do. So it's a little bit different than that. Good. I'm just looking at my notes, making sure I'm getting everything. Um, just this is a great overview. I probably oh, I went too fast. I went too fast. Go back. I'm not done. Other things, sports. We've had incredible participation numbers this year. Uh, football, I think we had twice the number this year for both middle school and high school football as we've seen in the past. There's certainly some strengths by that, behind that, as well as there are some, some challenges that sit there. Everything from facility, as well as participation and that everyone gets to have a place and a place that's there. And those can be challenges. Class of 2021, 77% went on to a four-year college. 77%. Um, Looking at my notes, 5% went on to military, 2% went on to the mission field or work field. As we look at uh, this year, 74 students will have taken the college and career course offered, which spends the semester looking at colleges, trade schools, et cetera, after this. Students create a personal and professional resume and even interview for a job in front of classmates, which is probably more challenging than in front of adults. <laughs> Um, we have two students that are National Merit Commended students, and we have three more students that are National Merit uh, semifinalists, which is 1% of the population in the United States that have made that. And guys, I've been at some really high-end high schools, and to see those kind of numbers, five kids to be National Merits is really unheard of for a huge high school, much less a school that is our size. These are just a good overview. You guys can see the numbers. I have to bring it up to my face so I actually can read it because it's too small and it's too far away from my face. Um, you guys can see that the state average uh, is the top one. National average is around 1,000 points. The CVCS average is 1,200. And then our top 25% of our, our uh, graduating class is around 1,400 for our SAT scores. So it's, it's wonderful to see how we're comparing to national averages. And SAT is just one area, of course, to be able to evaluate that. But we're, we're happy to see the kind of growth and, and the trending that we see with our tests. Class of 2021 earned $4.1 million in scholarships. That's an incredible celebration for especially the size. And what, what do we have, 75, 80 kids? You remember, Kim, last year graduate? I know I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah, it's the number of kids we had graduate last year, 75, 80? Yep, 77? I knew she would know. Um, we had seven athletes signed to play college sports last year. Uh, we already have three this year, and I know there's a whole handful of others of other students that are potentially signing to, to play sports. So uh, mostly I show that just to, it's for us to be able to just recognize the opportunities that kids are getting here. Um, I, I've Again, I've ran high schools as large as 2,400 kids, and they're like, oh, they're not going to see your kid. They're not going to see our kid if they're not playing at a large program, and I'm telling you, College coaches get paid a lot of money to go out there and find the athletes. And so it does not matter that they're playing at a small program. Uh, and I, I know I saw Connor earlier, but to be able to see the quality of coaches that we have that are pouring into our kids, I'm super excited about the discipleship that we really do. Uh, I, wrote, I read a quote, uh, I think it was today, that a coach impacts uh, kids in a, in a year more than most people do in their entire lifetime in one year. All right. I'm almost to the even to the end of this. Parent volunteer ba is back in action. I know we tried to chase you guys off during COVID. Please don't come to the campus. We've really tried to engage you more. I know that looks a little bit different at high school. Usually it's something about food, um, but we are consciously trying to engage more people in, in volunteering. So if you are still interested, if you don't feel like we've reached out, please reach back out to us so that we can look for opportunity to get you plugged in. We have prayer and prayer walks that are going on on both campuses. If you're a part of our prayer team, thank you so much for that. I think it's the most important thing we need to do. God, we, are, we are in, I say this over and over, we are in spiritual battle. Spiritual battle that's within this country, within our own local community, and definitely in for the lives and the, and, and the souls of our own kids. And uh, I know as I have two boys that the most important thing that God continues to remind me is, is praying for my own two boys. So thank you for that. And if, if you're not a part of that, please come. Uh, both offices have information on that. So if you want to be a part of the prayer team, I, that is an unlimited number that can come and pray. So come and do it. Um, I know you guys have heard about our growth, and I'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second. Uh, but we have unprecedented uh, applications. Um, in one week, in the first week of January, we had over 300 applications uh, for next year for positions we don't even have. I mean, we have grade levels, 
um, literally low, low high school all the way down to first grade that have almost 30 kids, not on the waiting list, already registered to hopefully have a position for next year. And so just know that that's the real thing that's sitting out there. And we'll talk a little bit about our, our growth, what we're planning to do with that or not do with that, at least what we're trying to walk through. And definitely can covet your guys' prayers with that. Um, we continue to do community building events. I'm not going to go through all the details of that, but we're excited about that. And if you don't have this on your calendar, the gala this year is going to be on April the 8th. So we'd love to have you. If you haven't been to that, it's a fun time. It definitely is our number one fundraiser of the year. Uh, but uh, we're excited about that. It seems like I missed a slide or I forgot to say something. I don't see it, so I'll just say that. As far as fundraising goes, um, it might have been on my back, back slide and I just didn't mention it. At the end of December of this last year, the end of year gifts was over $300,000. Um, and so I just want to thank those especially that gave at the end of this year. That's one of the, the greatest end of the year gifts that the school's ever had. Last year's general gifts of donations were, was, I think, the largest total we've ever had, especially if you combined the uh, new property for those that have already began to give to that, even though we're not even asking anyone to do that, but we appreciate those that have reached out. And uh, I just want to thank you guys for that. That $300,000, just so you guys know exactly where that's going, we're pulling $75,000 off of that right now to, to have as uh, staff gifts for next year. Uh, we're trying to have a gift or end of the year or a bonus at the end of the year for Christmas every year. We're trying to perpetuate that so we make sure that we have that. Uh, we did that this year. We took it out of general budget, and we're trying to have that as a, something we perpetuate through the years. The other 200, um, even as I heard the middle school boys, uh, I think, uh, bus broke down on the way to what? Yeah, Nis, Nissa. I knew it's some little town. I'm still trying to figure out the little towns. They all have little weird, weird names to me. I, I, someone told me it was Tord Vale. I'm like, that's in Colorado. So I don't know where that is either, but I know it's Tord Vale or that direction. Am I right? Okay, thank you for Idaho is are helping me out just a little bit. It's north of something like that. Um, but uh, a lot of that's going to be going. We're going to be leasing some new buses uh, in, instead of owning some of these old ones that break down just about every week. Uh, we're going to be leasing some newer ones and making sure that they're great running buses. We're trying to get a truck right now with a plow on it. And then there's a number of tech, tech opportunities that we have as well as facility opp opportunities that we'll be taking that money and going directly to. So thank you so much for your gifts that are around there. Let me talk quickly, um, which is what I've been doing the whole time, about our strategic, strategic initiatives. Now, we did something we call a Stratop about a year ago. And uh, in the Stratop, we really whittled it down. We looked at our core missions and vision. We looked at who our core values were. We had a team of, of leadership as well as board members who were part of this. And we came down to these six areas that we call our, our Stratop. And I'll briefly talk through a few of those. Number one, long-term hiring plan. For those that don't know, there's a little bit of a challenge hiring in all areas, and uh, teaching is not one of those that's uh, easy as well. I know most of the districts in the area are challenged with that. Uh, Tabitha is our um, HR uh, coordinator, and we've been working on ways to continue to reach out to colleges as well as future applicants to make sure that we're filling these spots with great applicants. And it's it's going to be an ongoing battle, so that's something you guys can pray about, but that's, that's one of our strategic um, plans. Second new site plan, um, the board, myself, as well as the entire leadership team have been working hard. Michael and I had a beautiful uh, meeting this week about sewer. So if anyone wants to show up for sewer meetings, well, it was funny until we found out we had to maybe move the sewer pipe for an entire mile. I'm like, no, we don't want to have a sewer that goes an entire mile. I found out that that's not cheap. So be praying for the details of that. We will be hopefully presenting some of those so you get to see what that new plan looks like. I have a new version of it sitting on my table upstairs, and uh, and we will hopefully be launching some things where you guys can see where that is coming soon. And so we're excited about that. Developmental plan or development plan, uh, for those that have not been able to meet Wade, Wade is our new director of development. Um, if he hasn't met you, I, I would be surprised because he's pretty good at meeting everybody. Uh, we pulled him on our development team. We're definitely going to have a two-part development. One, which is going to be a capital campaign for the new facility, as well as our ongoing fundraising program. So that's an entire strategic plan that we have around there. Um, School-wide teacher training plan. Um, all of our principals are leading this up on being specific. I talked a little bit about our PLT uh, earlier, but we're being very specific about what we want teachers to learn how we want to make sure that they learn our culture specifically around discipleship as well as what's best 
training that's out there uh, from an educational standpoint. I believe one of the thing, mistakes Christian schools make at times, you don't want to just focus on the, the faith and you don't want to just t- focus on the educational piece. You want to focus really well on both of those. And we're trying to have a balanced approach. We've got a great evaluation tool that, the t- that their principals are doing an amazing job to hold the teachers accountable to. And we're adding layers to how we're training our teachers as they come in. So that's, that's a strategic plan that's being led. Uh, clear strategy for intentional discipleship. I'm going to talk here in a second about one of the areas that we think we've got to grow in, especially as we've grown in numbers. We've got to come back for sure to our mission statement and what, what we care about the most, which is discipling kids. And uh, Matt Banglinger and, and the team is leading that up on how are we going to be focused over and over on discipling these kids. How are we going to use our advisory better? How are we going to use our coaches better? How are we going to use every element that we have to disciple these kids more and more, as well as our retreats and everything that sits there? And then a parent engagement plan. We've got a team that's working on that. Next. So after that strategic plan, we came up with three more that were not a part of our original of these three that have been slapped in the face of us that we better start dealing with because they're dealing with us. Certainly a growth plan. Uh, we've been working on a growth development, growth plan, as well as even launching some ideas. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second. The development of a middle school. Um, for those that have been around this school for some time, we have had two schools. And I've, I've, I've paraphrased it up here. We have the elementary school and we have the secondary school. Um, we are, a missing element that we have in the school is in middle school. A middle school where it's six, seven, eight. Some schools have it seven, eight, nine. We believe six, seven, eight is the right move. Uh, we're talking about timing, whether that's going to be this next year or a year after that, potentially. But the idea that we need a middle place where we take care of these kids that are going through adolescence. And Mr. Goodbar is someone we reached out and hired specifically to come. It has amazing experience to do that. So we're making a plan to make sure you don't go straight from sixth grade to seventh, which feels more like secondary. And at times, specifically in this building, can feel like you're a little bit part of the high school. And we know that. We know that that's an element that we've got to improve on. So that's an area we're working on. Focus on our mission and CVS culture. I already mentioned this briefly, but as we've grown, we know that our culture can be impacted. If you have a a change in your population of 30%, those 30% don't necessarily know the culture prior. We, We need to do a good job of making sure that they learn that, as well as we have to continue to work on our relationships right here. Uh, I heard, especially at the elementary school, one of the things everyone misses is having the Thanksgiving uh, thing together where we get to sing and scream and run around in the gymnasium. And the fact is right now we don't fit all together. The middle school and high school fits. But if you brought the elementary plus, we w- I, think, I think we added it up. I think we would need somewhere around 15 buses or something to even get from A to B. That's not practical anymore. So the question is, how do we build culture, create opportunities for us to be in those relationships that might have to look a little differently than they did in the past? And so we're working on all of those elements. You guys are doing a good job of paying attention to me. I appreciate it. Okay, making decisions to grow. Um, I'll own this misjudgment. The decision we made this last year to grow, we decided to add a section in our secondary, 7 through 12. Last February, the city guaranteed me, whatever that means, by the way, and I'm not trying to badmouth any, any business or any state, but all I know is it's pretty challenging to build things in Meridian right now. And uh, we were told with, w- w- there would be no problem in making sure that I had at least two modulars, four additional classrooms in June. And as, as you've noticed, they haven't landed yet. Although, actually, if you did drive by, there is one that's out there right now. Thank you, Jesus. As of January 1st, finally, we got at least the building permits, and we're hoping by spring break that we're going to at least have four classrooms out there, two brand-new modulars, to be able to get the two classes because we had to overflow, and we've got a class that's being taught in the cafeteria. and We've got classes, of course, being taught in here, especially uh, study hall and some things like that. And that was a miscalculation. Uh, I, and we take, I, that's, it's my fault. Um, I'll just tell you guys that. Uh, now, did I believe what I was told? Yes. Did we make the plans? We thought we made the plans. We did a good job with it. Um, but it didn't happen. And the, the challenges that we've had with the city and, and specifically ACHD regarding the road improvement that we have to do right here, that was the biggest hiccups. And uh, um, just and just know, we, we've got to do two almost $200,000 worth of 
of fixes to widen a street that never needs to be widened. I'm sorry, being political up here on the, on the microphone uh, for probably two years. <laughs> and so it feels like flushing money down the toilet a little bit to me, but I know the rules and regulations are sitting there, but that's what the hiccup's been. And so um, I'm excited I, as our teachers that are mo going from classroom to classroom or teaching in uh, the cafeteria speech, uh, they are super excited to be able to be in the classroom where that's not happening. And if you haven't done this already, we've got some teachers that are all stars, the ones that are going from class to class and doing an amazing job, the ones that are teaching in spaces that are challenging. And I, I mean, I went down to a teacher and I jokingly said to her, well, hey, we're just going to move you out to the module even though it's, the walls aren't connected. And all she said to me is, I don't care where I teach, Alan. You just tell me where to go. I'm ready to go. She's awesome. Um, growth has, I talked about that already. Growth has impacted our culture. And we're, we're wanting to take that ground back. And we're working strongly on what that means and how we impact it back. Um, refocus on relationships and culture. And being creative. Um, we had a, a principal meeting the other day. And, and here's what I've said to my principals and I've challenged them. I want us to figure out how we create, it's almost like if you go to a large church, how do we create home groups, cell groups? How do we do that by class now? Which I think is one of the best ways to do that. How does the junior class get close together and have the relationships? How do we do that with eighth grade now? How do we do that with the advisory groups and potentially have a part of that? So everyone's been challenged to figure out how within those cells, especially by grades, we create more relationship opportunities. I'm coming to a close, I see it coming. I already talked a little bit about the modular update. Again, we'll have those four, thank you, Jesus, um, by spring break. And uh, we're excited to get, get into those spaces. Growth, elephant in the room. Um, I already told you a little bit about where our growth is. We did, we did make the decision to grow here this, this last year. And um, I'm certainly glad we did. Certainly, there, there's, you know, Kim and Brian and Matt, the secondary leadership have done an amazing job to make a great experience for these kids, even though it's a little bit uh, stuffed into classrooms. Um, but we are wanting to be very mindful of our next steps with growth. Uh, we have, we did open meetings last week, uh, specifically about the idea of bringing sixth grade over here and adding ch chunks here. Uh, we we're talking about bringing sixth grade over here. We don't know if that's going to happen this year or next year. But we want to make sure that we have full classroom spaces before we make that decision. We want to make sure that we know uh, how we would deal with drop-off and pick-up and the volume that would be before and after school before we make those decisions. And so I'm just committing that to you guys. Uh, we had a board meeting this week, and most of the conversation was around those details. And we just created a, a committee uh, that's an implementation committee. Um, that's specific around sixth grade, what are the details we would need to do for this to happen? So whether we decide to make sure that this happens August of this year, or whether we choose to do it the year after that, what are those details we need to make sure that are in place, ready to go, no matter how we do that? Um, we have had conversations. I might be getting ahead with my, my uh, let me see if I have, might be getting ahead. I'll just skip around it anyway. Um, let me go to this. New property, I already talked a little bit about that. Right now, um, we're looking at 2024, the earliest to potentially have the athletic fields done. That's a conversation literally one day ago that we had <laughs> uh, with the idea that the possibility of the entire structure being done in fall of 2025. And uh, so be praying for that. Cost of construction right now is crazy. Um, very crazy. And so we're going to need God to come in and do some amazing things. Uh, Brett and I were able to sit down with some financial modelers this week. What, how could you structure this kind of thing as well, as well as fundraising to actually get this to happen? So be praying for that, please. You know, we only want, just like the growth conversation I just had, we only want to step forward with this as well as growth as if God's called us to do that. We have no desires to grow. We have no desire, but we do have a desire to impact and disciple as many kids as God wants to put in front of us. And I'm excited about what we can do. We, I already talked about this. See, I jumped around, and that's good. I talked a little bit about this. That would be kind of the model of what we would be doing. Um, but I'm not going to talk more, too many more de uh, details about this. Um, I talked about the idea of it. I'm trying to think. How many parents are in here are eighth grade parents? Seventh grade parents? Okay, seventh and eighth grade. Um, specifically, I'll, I'll speak for Brian a little bit. What we want to create 
as soon as possible is this middle school culture more and more where they're in a teaming concept where the same teachers are teaching these kids. Okay, We are trying to reduce the amount of time those teachers are both teaching middle school and high school because my experience, and I was a middle school teacher, is adolescence is a whole different time and they need a whole different kind of care than a typical high school teacher would. Most high school teachers don't love middle school. They like, they can do it. Most middle school teachers don't love high school. They can do it. There really is a call that sits around that middle level. And I'm excited about what Brian's doing. So whether we bring the sixth grade next year or not to create this entire middle school culture, I know that's the steps that we're going to be starting to take next year as Brian's pulling his team together. Um, more details will come about that, but it's really going to have to happen probably after the implementation team makes some decisions, and we do as a board, which will be next month, uh, on whether we are going to bring sixth grade this next year or not. And I'll just be honest with you. A week ago, I would have said, absolutely, we're doing this. We're at a spot right now. We're not sure. There's some other issues with modular. I don't trust anyone that tells me, yes, you're going to have a modular at this point in time. I want to see a modular on the ground before I start pulling the trigger on things. And I know Brett already set a meeting with me to talk about modulars tomorrow. I'm like, I don't want to talk about modulars at all, ever, never. So uh, we'll find out if that was nebulous enough or if you guys have more questions. And Mr. Goodbar, if you guys don't know him, uh, is in the back. And he'll be up here to, to be able to answer some questions here a second if you guys have that as well. Last, elementary growth. We are also considering adding a section to elementary. Um, the idea is if we move sixth grade over here, we would drop two more modulars, four classrooms. Sixth grade over here would give us seven classrooms. We would add a fourth section to the elementary. Um, we think there's some advantages to that, and there's some disadvantages. The disadvantages, of course, is growth. The advantage is there's some potential, actually, to do some smaller classes. Right now, each teacher actually teaches all three classes, almost like they do in middle school. And so they're actually impacting or having to have a relationship with 70-some kids. If they went to two-person teams, they will only have 48 kids to have those relationships with. And most elementary teachers are generalists. And so even though they might be teaching math, they're trained to teach all the other things as well. And so we are looking at that model. So whether we do that short, short term or, or this next year or the following year, that is the direction we're looking at. And we believe God's calling us to do, especially as we look at the numbers. And But we don't want to do any of this unless we know that we can stay true to who we are, our core values and our mission, be able to disciple and impact these kids the way that we're called to do that. I feel like I'm mumbling that a little bit. I'm trying to share my heart with it. Um, and some of these are incredible moving targets as of even the last two days and an email that was an hour ago. And so that's at least my heart that sits there. There's, here's the thing again for questions. You guys can go on that. And uh, if you're online right now and you guys have questions, you guys can use the same one. Um, I, there's a first question that I have that's on the app is, um, why, why not just hire two custodians? Uh, one or custodians here in the other other place. Right now, how many do they staff to build a cleaner two facilities? Four in each. So right now, we'd have to staff somewhere around eight to be able to function. Um, are we looking at that as a possibility? We are. But just so you guys know, we don't even have a director of facility right now. He uh, did actually pass away um, four months ago, I think it was, of COVID. Um, and so right now we're in the, in the middle of trying, right now I'm the director of facility as well, um, which is why we have issues with our modulars, I think. That's probably the issue. Um, but right now we're in, we actually have finalists, three finalists uh, for that position. So I'm so excited. Uh, so we get him on and we might, but we're also t looking at some other custodial companies. We interviewed four in the last two weeks. I know I saw a fourth one today and we're hoping that those uh, um, are gonna come back as good bids. Any other questions that are up here? How about questions here that you guys have? We have another microphone. Um, I've got leaders here that can answer questions, especially if I cannot. I need a Vanna that can. I said Vanna in a high school thing the other day, and they all looked at me like, who's Vanna? They had no idea what I was talking about. Zero. I felt so old. One in the back, far back left, Vanna. Connie Vanna. This is Connie. She works in our business office. She's amazing. She's at everything. Thank you. Um, so I'm curious, what are we, has, um, when they put the modulars across the street, yeah. safety, how will that be addressed for the kids getting back and forth? Great question. Kim, you want me to try to answer that or you want to try to answer that? Okay. So 
the entire crossing guard is going to be entirely changed. It's going to be a lit crossing guard that will be there. Uh, who will be in the modular is only high school students also. Just so you know, we will not have middle school in the modulars. And so uh, certainly we do believe high school kids can, can own that as, to a degree, but it will be a lit flash crossing guard that will be sitting there. And you know, as, as we see that, we'll watch it. Uh, and then we'll make the decision whether we actually have to put a physical crossing guard there as well. We'll certainly have the teachers coming out, doing eyesight, um, the way we have it designed for the way they come in. There'll be a uh, sidewalk and everything else that'll also be built in there with a curb on that side. I think it's going to be incredibly, it's certainly going to, it's going to be safer than it is right now, for sure. And we're going to have high school students totally out there. Because huh? we're, we're also going to have, we'll have um, eight to nine uh, full-time staff members who yep, kind of reside over there. So uh, what will happen in terms of high school passing, they'll be on a rotation mm. for having a duty at the crossing, right? But uh, like Alan already said, that structure is going to be, it's not going to be the white little lines that you can barely see. No. Nope. On the street right now, right, and then and then no, it's there a beautiful be, fifty thousand dollar something they're yeah, making me put it, in. I and then forget. it'll be an additional process for when if middle school uh, crosses the street during lunchtime to use the field. That will be uh, a whole other level of supervision and manning that process. Oh, so uh, no, I am only the only time, the only reason middle schoolers would be crossing the street, any middle schoolers, would be to use the field during lunch. During lunch, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah, PE yeah, yeah. or something like that. Right. Sure. Exactly. Okay. The question I have here: Go ahead and keep that mic, Miss Kim. Um, can high school students access Idaho State fast forward funds for dual credit courses? I know this has been a question. I have a I have a meeting on my schedule tomorrow with the state about that very issue. Um, so I had attended um, a hearing, a Senate hearing, um, right before COVID downtown at the Capitol over this. And if you know Senator um, uh, Herzog, Dean Herzog, is that her last name? She's over at Napa Christian. Mm -hmm. Anyway, she's a huge proponent of this and has been an incredible voice in support of this. So we are making headway and I believe I will have good news um, from the meeting tomorrow. And I believe if there are funds available, it will be a first come first serve, uh, I believe starting in April at some point. Because my understanding I don't know up why to I this keep point, looking at time, you like you asked the question. I mean, I'm I'm just talking to the room, but you're a friendly face, so hello. Because <laughs> up to this point in time, private schools have not been given have that we access, been, had, right, and we've and, been battling that as far as fair, fair access to education. Is yeah, and it's that's it, so. I'm sorry, I have a microphone, so I'm going to keep talking. But yep. one of the annoyances, that's why we keep it away from her. One of the annoyances in that uh, that we discussed uh, that was discussed at the at the at the Senate hearing was or Senate committee hearing was that. Uh, the program has already been giving dollars to schools like NNU. Yep. So they're, they're allowing dollars to be spent there, but they don't want to give dollars to parents to, to spend on education. That it, it, it just doesn't make any sense. So they're trying to draw these, these lines and divisions between church and state, and they're already breaking those rules. So it's, it's not logical. Next question I had, um, what are the plans for the Brewer building? We sold it uh, a few months ago. Thank you, Jesus. Another real thank you, Jesus moment. Um, originally, we purchased that with the idea of it potentially being a middle school. Uh, as we looked at the project costs and the future design, uh, the board made the decision that it was not a valuable asset. And so we did sell. We made a little bit of money on off of it. We didn't go in the hole, and that's good. Uh, the Our neighbors actually purchased it, and we're actually renting right now storage because we have all of our new classroom equipment that should go in brand new modulars that are sitting in the beautiful Brewer building. And so right now it's storage as well as they're allowing us to use that parking lot for our staff. As we've grown, certainly we've needed more uh, parking. That is one element so that you guys know we have a, a partnership with the Brewer Building, the people that own that for additional parking for us, as well as the Orthodox Church across the street. I just got okay from them as well to, is to be able to use, I think they have 12 or 14 parking spots there. As long as we remove the snow, they said we can use their parking lot. Uh, during the uh, their week. So that allows us to have another 14. So I feel pretty confident we're going to be in good shape. Um, growth at the high school level, just so you guys know, we've already grown. There really is no other growth that's going to happen at this campus unless we bring sixth grade here. 
That's the only growth. There's some natural growth. Uh, I think the junior class coming up to senior class is larger than the existing senior class. And I know there's a few registration numbers, but we're almost capped at every grade level, seven, eight, nine, um, 10, 11's got a couple, 12's got a few. And that's about all that sits there. Uh, seventh grade coming in, we'll be adding a section, so we will have openings there because they go. They currently at sixth grade only have three sections, which is about 75 kids. So there will be 25 open spots. So if you have friends that would like their kids to be in seventh grade here, right now is the time to apply for that. Not three weeks from now. Right now is the time to apply for that. Well, other questions? You guys are making my job easy. I feel like I scrambled that around a little bit today. Yes. Right up here, guys. Come on, Vanna. I knew. That's still in your Uh-huh. Uh, I was just curious, what size of custodial company do you need? Large enough that can guarantee to have about eight or nine. I mean, again, so, nine, yeah, okay. so we've got this campus. Certainly, I forget. Did you guys figure out the square footage by, by chance, Brett? No, um, it's this campus and then the elementary campus, which also includes the church, because we have kind of a dual relationship. We want one company that's going to do both, even though we share the costs that are sitting there. So right now, I think it's about eight people. And then we also have what's called a day porter that uh, works in the cafeteria here, does the, the entire cafeteria, you know, starting around noontime and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think it's eight or nine people would have to do it, unless someone had a really bright way to do it differently than that. Okay. We also run two churches. that We, we actually um, rent out this location, so a church meets here, as well as in the annex building. That's another thing on, on growth, I didn't say. We are also looking at dividing the annex building in half, um, where we'll have an overflow. Uh, there'll be a, basically a wall that goes straight down the middle of that. We'll create a better band area. We're going to get rid of that stage and create that to be feel more like a true band room instead of just some open auditorium. Uh, we also then could use it for other classrooms. The other piece of this, we're actually going to put linoleum down and have as an overflow room for the cafeteria. Okay, So we'll have an additional area for, for students to eat uh, and then get it cleaned up real fast by that day porter so we can also cross it over as, as a classroom at the other times of the day. So you guys are reminding me of other details. One of the biggest conflicts that we've had for custodial staff um, being full-time uh, here is that um, everything's in use all day. And so by the time, and you know, we use this facility from you know, the wee hours of the morning, I mean, we'll be in different parts of the building until you know, 9 and 10 p.m many, many times. So it's like you need a lot of people for a short amount of time, if that makes sense, sometimes. The uh, question I have online is, any plans or ideas to fix pickup and drop off with growth? It's already tough as people park and uh, hold cards up down the road. If, if there is growth, it'll even be worse. So one of the ideas, thoughts that we have specifically with the middle school model, if we add any, any students here, is actually having a different pickup and drop off time. So middle school would actually have a different schedule. Um, we would make sure middle school, again, this is if we're able to bring sixth grade here. I, I don't know the exact plans if we don't. I don't know that we'll change the, the schedule yet, uh, but that's our desire because we think it's the best fix. Uh, then there would probably be a 10 or 15 minute difference in the start and end time uh, for middle school and high school. Uh, so that would be our number one choice at fix. We're also looking at possible uh, battling through this a little bit, two drop-off locations where we have two loops, one here and one in the front, where we'd also potentially have the front door as, as a, a short route. So we're playing with both of those ideas. Um, the other thing is if we do grow the fourth section at the elementary, we're going to create a bus hub that comes from the east side of Boise that will come to the elementary campus. Um, uh, we have a large constituency that actually wanted to start another elementary school on the south or southeast part of Boise. And in partnership with them, one of the things we agreed to is if we could figure out how to do growth with this, how about we start looking at a busing opportunity instead? You know, I think as we look at the new facility, the idea of having three or four bus routes or hub routes where we meet at churches. So this will be a church, Eagle Church, that's on the east side over there. They've agreed to be a hub for us where they can have a drop-off. Right now, we're just doing that for the elementary campus right now. So, What else? You guys are just looking at it's 8 o'clock. You're like, that's an hour. I'm good. 
Did I miss Brian? Anything you wanted to say that, that I missed potentially, or, or Matt? Okay. They say you give good wait time. Make sure there's not that. But I also want to honor your guys' time this evening. All right, well, we'll stick around. If you guys have any questions you didn't want to ask out loud, we'll try to summate some of these um, and be able to send these back out uh, with, with the information. Um, those that are online, you guys can do the exact same thing. If you want to add any more questions to this, this will be live. Do you know how long, how, Dave, how long? What's till Friday? Yeah, we'll have this live uh, to be able to ask these questions till Friday because then we'll summate it and be able to put question or answers to those questions so everyone that potentially wasn't here can both see the video as well as the questions and answers that we had here, okay? Thank you guys so much. Let me pray for you and uh, specifically let's pray for our kids. God, we just lift up every young man and young woman that walks into these doors and God, we pray you would touch them in a mighty way. Father, we... We give them to you, and we pray your will be done in their lives, that you'd raise them up in wisdom and understanding of you, that you'd draw them close to you, that they would, within themselves, Father, Holy Spirit, come in and move and draw them to yourself, Father. Um, we don't want them just to grow up to be uh, these brilliant people, but we want them to be ones that are coming after you and the ones that want to listen to your heart and, your, and seek your face above all other things in their lives. God, give us wisdom as we grow and as we're dealing with our finances, that we would honor you in everything we do. And as we talked about our mission, God, show us how to touch and impact every single kid that walks in here. That no kid would fall in the cracks. That every kid would be seen. That they would be touched and impacted in love for who they are and the differences and the strengths and the weaknesses and everything they have. God, just anoint us to do that. We love you so much and thank you for just the school uh, that can bless so many kids. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, thanks so much for being here. Have a wonderful night. Bye.